I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Tarn the Uncaring, Omega Level Mutant, Origin Explored. Tarn the Uncaring is one of the more recent characters in the Marvel Universe. He appeared in the sixth issue of the comic Helions in November 2020. Tarn is a hybrid born after forced breeding between Annihilation's demons and the Okaran mutants. He is a genomic image who has the ability to manipulate the genes of other mutants. He is the leader of the Locust Vile, a cult of Amenthi mutants. They pledge themselves to Tarn in the hopes that they would be transformed by Tarn's powers. He is also a member of the Great Ring, making him an Omega level mutant. Intriguing, right? Well, keep watching, because in today's video, we'll explore the origins of this Omega level mutant. Before we go into our explanation today, a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Small click for you, but for us, means a lot. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Who is Tan the Uncaring? Tan the Uncaring lives up to his name by being a sadist of the greatest order who takes great pleasure in torturing his victims' very beings. Tan sees himself as a deity who inscribes his mark on the DNA of his followers as a sacrilegious blessing. Only Tan's followers, who revere him as a living god, regard him as their father and live only to carry him to other places so he may propagate his perversions, are more frightened than his victims. Tan is a vindictive addictive mutant who would do anything to exact revenge for any perceived slight against him or his magnificent achievements. Due to his godlike abilities, Tan is conceited and regularly plays with his opponents, causing physical deformities. He even takes away their powers before murdering them. Despite being despised by the Araki, he seems to get along well with Iska, the unbeaten, with whom he fought against Araki for a thousand years. Now let us look a little into his life and his storyline. As we told you, Tan was born due to forced mating between Annihilation's demons and the Arkham and mutants. As a result, he developed into a mutant and a sorcerer who could alter the DNA of other mutants. He is a bizarre looking creature with grey skin and yellow or purple eyes. He sculpted the physical features and skills of hated Amenthian mutants who swore allegiance to him using his magic. Through this procedure, many of them perished, but those who lived served Tarn without hesitation and revered him as a god. The group of mutants was called the Locus Vile after Arako submitted to Amanth as a result of Genesis being one with Annihilation, Tarn and the Locus Vile moved and settled in Arako. Tarn's Vile School Omnipaths kept a watch on the Araki populace during the Amenthian occupation, seizing anybody with rebellious ideas and transferring them to the Abyssal prisons to be tortured. Tarn was in charge of the jails and grew to be despised in Arako as a slur on everyone who put up with his tortures rather than the bow the knee to annihilation, Tarn eventually claimed a place on the great ring of Arako. Let's take a look into Helion's issue number 6 to understand how he was introduced into the Marvel Universe. The Hellions of Krakoa travelled through a portal in an attempt to steal the Ten Swords of Arako. When they arrive at Amanth, they find Tarn the Uncaring there. They inform him about their intentions when Tarn tells them that the swords are actually in the other world across the gate they just came from, where the swords are already in use by champions in a contest. The lot start fighting amongst themselves because they travelled all this way only to find nothing, all on Sinister's command. So Tarn uses his mind-reading powers to find out what it is that Sinister was truly after. He had come to take what Tarn calls the true treasure of Arako, the genes of its mutants. Sinister had a gene collection that he prized. He had dragged the Hellions of Krakor all the way to Amanth just to collect more genes. This obviously enraged the Hellions, and Havoc was about to get violent with Sinister. However, Sinister just pushed him off and asked to see the mutants. Tarn agreed as long as he just looked and didn't touch them. He summoned the Locus Vile, his little group of mutants. 
Sinister gets literal heart eyes when he sees them and calls them beautiful, to which Tarn replies, yes, beautiful and mine. Their mutations exalted, then defiled by me, the great genomic mage, Tarn the Uncaring. I've seen the desire of your heart, pale one. I know it well. I also came to Arako to plunder while Genesis feuds, but rid yourself of the notion that you will pluck the vial for your garden. This is my work. I have signed their souls. At that moment, Sinister releases these mosquito-like creatures who are his genetic collection drones. This enrages Tarn, and he unleashes the vial on the Helions. Three of the Helions die, while the rest try to run away through the portal again. Sinister had given the genetic material collected by the drones to Psylocke earlier. Meanwhile, Tarn kills Sinister, while the rest of the Helions panic and try to cross through the portal. However, what they do not realize was that they were still not safe. They emerged through the portal into a plume of smoke where they were murdered by the actual Sinister. Yes, the Sinister Tarn killed earlier was just a clone. After murdering the Helions, Sinister ripped his clothes and emerged from the smoke saying, my sweet holy god, help, there's been a terrible attack, my precious Helions, they're dead. Now we jump to issue number 14, where Tarn and his Locus Vile show up again. Tarn is still looking for Sinister. He is not at all pleased that Sinister took what was his. So he shows up at Krakoa, where the Hellions have been reborn. They no longer have their memories, but they remember Tarn for some reason. The Locus Vile and the Hellions fight one another when Tarn shows up. He confronts Sinister, the real one this time, and reveals the truth behind his actions. He tells the Hellions how he had sent them on the mission to get them to do his bidding, and had killed them after that. The Helions are enraged and want to take their revenge on Sinister. However, before anyone can do anything, Sinister releases a horde of Chimeras who look just like him and runs away through the portal to a safe location unknown to the Helions and Tarn. But Tarn manages to find where Sinister is through Psylocke. He hunts down Sinister but isn't able to kill him because Amino, one of the Locus Vile, is in the fetus stage and if he ate any more, he would burst into infants and eat strands of time until there was nothing but annihilation. Crazy, right? Well, that's the power of Tarn the Uncaring and his Locus Vile. Magneto versus Tarn the Uncaring. Now this was a particularly interesting series of comics. The land of Arako is in a grave situation. They must figure out what to do with Amanth, and if they can face the demons alongside Genesis, or remain on Arako and build a new life. Storm is the regent of Sol in the Great Ring, and things haven't been smooth sailing for her. All the X-Men struggle just like her to find their place in this crazy new world. There is this man called Vulcan, who claims to be royalty and wants to be emperor of Arako. But Arako has no thrones. It is utopian in its nature, in the sense that there is a democracy in the Great Ring. But yeah, Vulcan's going crazy. Meanwhile, Magneto has made his home in an isolated place in Arako. So in this tense political atmosphere, one of the seats of the Great Ring became empty, and Vulcan wanted to contest for it. Meanwhile, Storm was forming the Brotherhood of the Mutants with Magneto. There was unrest in Arako, as Vulcan wanted to become their emperor. However, the Araki did not want that to happen. They supported the Brotherhood, so Vulcan decided to contest for the empty seat in the Great Ring instead. He was supposed to fight for the seat, against Tarn the Uncaring. Meanwhile, the Brotherhood was trying to convince Magneto to go against Tarn, as he was one of the main reasons for anguish amongst the Araki. But Magneto did not want to try and recreate a utopia again. He was deeply scared of hurting people. He had lost his first daughter, Anya, in the process of creating a utopian nation for people. That loss hurt him deeply, and he didn't want to do it anymore. He claimed, I no longer have the heart. The next day, everyone was waiting to see the fight between Tarn and Vulcan. The two seem equally matched in power.
power. Vulcan had the power to eat mutant power. The two weapon thieves were going against each other in battle. Vulcan stole Tarn's genomic control powers, so Tarn decided to fight without his powers. However, the thing is, Vulcan never fought without powers. Therefore, he didn't know how to excel at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tarn used his face tentacles to grab Vulcan's hand and then proceeded to punch him. He then broke Vulcan's hand and smashed him to the ground, effectively killing him. Tarn was obviously quite happy with his win and said, Your challenger is dead. Tarn the uncaring sits in the seat of loss. Praise Tarn. I am the one who never dies. Have you not learned that? What will it take for you to learn your place? Who will be the next to fall? Who will challenge me now? Yep, he's arrogant. So at this point, a voice rings saying, I will. It is none other than Magneto. He wanted to turn away and not fight for the seat, but he wanted to do right by the people. Tarn accepted the challenge. Poor fool. Why do I say that? Well, the moment Tarn accepted, Magneto's helmet it flew right on top of Tarn's head. Magneto's helmet blocks mental powers, and Tarn's DNA control powers are psychokinetic, so the helmet would block Tarn's powers. The helmet was also made of metal, meaning Magneto could control it easily. And just like that, Tarn was dead. He got crushed by Magneto and met his demise. Honestly, he had it coming this way. Tarn was a ruthless killer with no remorse. He had tortured the people of Arako long enough. What makes Tarn the Uncaring so powerful? Tarn the Uncaring was a very powerful Omega-level Amenthian. He had the power to manipulate genetic material or DNA. He could bend the DNA helix to his will and alter the very structure of someone's DNA. He also used this technique to create his locus vial. He forced the mutants into horrific stages of mutation. Alternatively, he could also take away powers by altering DNA. All of this comes with years of experience as Tarn is over a thousand years old. He also possesses a lot of strength. He has the ability to read minds and scan thoughts. He can also telepathically converse with people, which is what he did with the Helions when he told them what Sinister had done to them in Amanth. Tarn the Uncaring also has the power of telekinesis. He sliced Sinister's body into multiple pieces with just his mind in Helions issue number six. He also has the ability to teleport. He can teleport people from place to place using his magic. All these things make him really strong and really powerful. He makes for a very difficult opponent to beat, but Magneto was able to do it nonetheless with the help of his helmet. The helmet's blocking powers blocked Tarn's genetic manipulation abilities. Tarn the Uncaring is a bizarrely crazy character in our opinion. He looks like an unsettling ram with weird intentions to ruin everything in the way. He does though make for a great villain. It would have been great to see him a bit more in the comics, but his arc was very well created. What did you think of Tarn the Uncaring? Let us know in the comments below. And again, if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe to us if you haven't already. Do have a good one and be safe.